Welcome to The Messenger. I'm your host, Pastor Mark Banks. Glad that you're joining us. We're studying in the Word of God, and our message today and our study is on the resurrection. And we want to get right into the Word of God, and we ask God's presence with us today. Father, be with us as we study your Word in the name of Jesus, and bless those that are listening, that they may be touched by your Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch their hearts, Bless them, draw them to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm excited about the word of God. Hallelujah. We're talking about the resurrection. And if you remember what the resurrection is all about, it's bringing back to life. Amen. And we dropped off. We, we ended up in our last telecast, and we were talking about how there, that, that in all in Adam die physically, but all in Christ live physically. That's what the word of God said. Now, Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. And after that are Christ, all that are his at his coming. And then the Bible said, and then comes the end. Amen. So the Bible tells us that there's between the first resurrection and the coming of Christ, there's already been something like 1900 to maybe 2000 years between the first coming of Christ. Amen. And right now, we're what? Where are we now? We're in the dispensation of grace. We're looking for the coming of the Lord. Nobody can tell you what day or hour the Lord is coming. The Bible says not even the angels know that. No man knoweth the day or the hour of the coming of the Lord. So if somebody's telling you the Lord said he's coming Monday, you might as well go on out and eat and go out and have a good time because he ain't coming Monday because no man knows the day or the hour of the Lord's coming. This is a time when Jesus said this. He said in Matthew 24, let no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and deceive many. So be very careful in this time that we're living in. You've got to learn to put things against the word of God in this dispensation. We are in the last days, no doubt about it. We see Israel over there as a nation. That is a definite prophetic mile marker that lets us know for sure that these are the last days. How long the last days are, I don't know. But I do know this much, that we are in the last days. And we're looking for the Lord's return. So be ready. Get ready and be ready for the Lord's return. Because regardless to what a lot of people say, and I've heard this before, and so many times, so many say that this gospel has to be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. They have interpreted it that, that you have to preach the gospel to all the world before Jesus comes. Well, the end, the rapture, is not the end. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. The rapture is not the end. There's seven years of tribulation. There's a thousand-year millennial reign of Christ before we get to the end of the age. So what is the Lord talking about? Even the Bible says in the book of Revelation that angels will descend from heaven and preach the everlasting gospel. Do you know that angels are going to descend from heaven into this atmosphere during the tribulation period and preach the gospel? And they're going to preach to everybody. Everybody's going to hear in that day because the church will be gone and the tribulation will be going on and these mighty angels of God are going to preach the gospel. Amen. So, we're in a period of time right now where we got to be ready because we don't know when the Lord is coming. Can you say amen? But it's been about 1,900 to 2,000 years since the Lord was here, somewhere in that area. Amen. And the Bible tells us that there's what we call an out-resurrection coming. In other words, those that are going to be called out from among the dead. Can you say amen? And that's what the Bible talks about here in, in the word of God in Matthew 27. Because remember, this is what it said. I'm going to read it to you. It said, the graves were open. And the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after their resurrection. They, they could not perceive Jesus because he's the first fruits of the resurrection. But right after him, and they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 27, verses 50. So after Jesus rose from the dead, the graves of the saints were opened. Their bodies came out of the grave, and they went back into 
the, the city, the holy city of Jerusalem. Can you imagine if you lost somebody that you knew had died that was serving the Lord, one of the saints of God, and you know you was at their funeral and you saw him buried and you saw him die and all of a sudden Christ rises from the dead. And then the next thing you know, your uncle appears right at your doorstep. Or that loved one, that saint of God that was serving God and worshiping God and doing God's will that had died all of, all of a sudden, there they are right in your neighborhood again. And somebody say, I saw your uncle, or you see him yourself. That's the power of the resurrection. This resurrection is powerful. People literally got up bodily right after the Lord rose from the dead. And they appeared to people in Jerusalem. Oh, people of God and people out there that are listening to this telecast and viewing this, I'm come to tell you that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in serving God. God is all powerful, and he, he promised us a resurrection to bring those bodies back to life. Hallelujah. He's the first fruits, the Bible says. And they now... Those that, that, those that rose from the dead, they no doubt followed the Lord into paradise. Remember, paradise used to be in the ground, in the earth. Back when it talks about Lazarus and the rich man, it tells us that paradise was a place called Abraham's bosom. But after the resurrection of Christ, all those saints were taken up. Now they're in the presence of the Lord in the paradise which is in heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're not living for the Lord, you're missing out. You're not only missing out in this life, you're going to miss out in the life that is to come. You're going to miss out in the eternity future. Remember what I said before, and I'll say it again. In the past was eternity past. In the future is eternity future. There is an eternity future, and God says you're going to live forever, so you better know where you're going. You're going to be alive and conscious forever, so you better know where you're going, because you're going to know you're there. You're going to be aware of where you are. There's a resurrection coming of not only the just but the unjust, not only the righteous but the wicked, not only the believer but the non-believer. There is a resurrection coming. God is going to call you back and you're going to stand before him. We're going to see that one day. So we better get right with God. Can you say amen, somebody? So there is a time length. And this is the only time we see an actual time that is mentioned in the book of Revelation that gives us the actual time between two things. Amen. We know that it is a, a, a thousand years before the wicked live again. Amen. And they're, they're going to they're, they're gonna live again. Amen. And we're going to look at that in the word of God. So Jesus made these words, these reply to the, the, the Pharisees, in answer to their question about, remember the woman that had more than one husband? And they were trying to trap Jesus, and they asked him, well, if, if she had this husband and that husband, all these different husbands, whose wife is she going to be in the resurrection? Because he was talking about the resurrection, and they were trying to trap him. Amen. When Jesus replied to that, he said this. He said, his answer to that question was this. He said, they which shall be counted, accounted worthy to obtain that world. You see, the only way you're going to be accounted worthy to obtain this world or this age to come is you've got to be in Christ. You must be born again. And not those that are, will be counted worthy to obtain that world or that age and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. They can't even die anymore. No second death. You see, there's what we call a second death that's coming. And if you're in part of the first resurrection, the second death has no power over you. Because when you're raised, you're raised to live forever. They die no more. For they are equal to the angels, Jesus said. That's Luke 20. He said they're equal to the angels, and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. We are children of the resurrection. We're children of God. Amen. We're the children of the Most High God, and we're going to be like the angels. So this is a very important statement. 
Amen. He talks about the classes of the dead who are to be raised before the next millennial age. Amen. He talks about that in the Word of God, and we'll look at that in a little while here. But the Bible says they're raised and can die no more. The second death has no power over them. Amen. No power over them because they're going, to be, they're going to be raised from out among the dead. Amen. As children of God, of, of the resurrection, and we're going to live again before that time. Can you say amen, somebody? So the Bible tells us that there's, there's going to be a resurrection not only of the righteous, but of the unrighteous. Amen. So the first resurrection it talks about in Hebrews speaks of a better resurrection. The Bible talks about a better resurrection in the book of Hebrews. And this is what it's talking about here. The dead that they always believe, but the resurrection from among the dead. Now, that was a new doctrine at the time. They didn't have, had never heard of this. Amen. They never had heard of this before. But Paul talked about that. He said, this is a resurrection from among the dead. Amen. And this is the first resurrection. Now, Paul believed in the resurrection. He did believe in it. Amen. And he expressed the hope that it might, he might attain that resurrection. And this is what he said as he, as he talked about it, attaining that. In 1 Thessalonians, he said there, where he speaks of the resurrection of the dead, of, of, the, of the dead in Christ, and the transition of the living saints, which, you know, when Jesus comes back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he talks about that. He said, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. So you sorrow not as them that have no hope. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so which them are asleep, those that are asleep shall God bring with him. For we say this unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which remain and we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then he said, and we which remain, we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up to meet the Lord, caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I don't know when that trumpet's going to sound. I don't know when that angel's going to shout. But more than likely, he's going to say something like, Behold, the Lord your God. Or behold, the king cometh, and a trumpet blast, and we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That day is coming just as sure as God is God. But you better be ready for that day because there's going to be a taking out from among mankind. Those that are serving Christ, those that are in the body of Christ, those that are born again, those that are filled with God's spirit, those that are in the temple of God, come and join us and be a part of this, what God is about to do one day. Because the door is still open. I want to deviate just for a minute and say this. Did you know there's coming a day when there's not going to be given any mercy to people? There's coming a day when those who are lost, and we're going to look at it in the word of God, there's not going to be any mercy for them on that day. Many are going to say, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do good works? Didn't I do all these things in your name? He's going to say, I must confess, i never known you. You never were saved. You never repented. Yeah, you did these works, but you never came to me. See, you've got to come to God God's way. You can't just go do things and expect God to accept them. You've got to be born again. Except a man be born again, he won't see the kingdom of God. And the Bible says on that day it be no mercy because those whose name are not written in the book of life are going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death that we're talking about. Amen. So you want to be ready. You want to avoid with all your might. You want to avoid with all your being 
going to that lake because it's a one-way door. Once you get in there, you can't get out. And I want to say this to you as well. If you die unsaved, you're going to be unsaved forever. If you die out of Christ, you're going to be out of Christ forever. If you die not knowing Jesus, you'll never know him in the relationship he wants to have with you. But if you die righteous, you're going to be righteous forever. If you die in Christ, you're going to be in Christ forever. If you die right with God, you're going to be right with God forever. The choice is yours. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And I like what Joshua said. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. How about you? Amen. How about you? Are you going to serve the Lord? The Bible says that Christ will raise up the church at his coming, at the second coming of the Lord. He's coming back to usher in. And then after the Lord comes and raptures the church, and let me give you this here for you to think about. We're looking for the rapture. We're looking for the Lord to descend from heaven and to call up the church. Because when he calls us up, that's it. After the calling up of the church, we're not going to deal with the beamer right now. We'll talk about that later. But after he calls the church up, because God, what is God doing right now? God is gathering to himself a people. God is gathering out of the seed of Adam a people. And these people are not going to be like Adam. They're going to be like Christ. They're going to be transformed into the image of Christ. Paul said we're going to be like him because we're going to see him like he is. This is God's plan. God is gathering himself a people together. You ought to be a part of that. And don't miss out on eternity. Don't miss out on the blessing and the wonderful future that God has in store for all them that love him. For those that serve him and do his will, God has a magnificent future for us. But what's going to happen is the rapture of the church. God's going to take out the church. And after God takes out the church, I believe the seven years of God's judgment on the earth called the Great Tribulation. And Jesus said some things about this tribulation period that's pretty powerful. He said, except those days be shortened, no, sis, no flesh would be saved. He said, but for the elect's sake, he's going to shorten those days. Amen. He said, a time is coming that it's going to be so bad on the earth that there's never been a time like that to parallel what's going to happen. I know we're going through things in this time that we're living in with the coronavirus and different things going on right now, but this is nothing compared to what's coming. This is nothing compared to that seven years that's coming when the wrath of God is going to be poured out. We're going to deal with that. Where God is going to be pouring out his wrath and terrible things are going to happen in the earth. The devil, or what I call the satanic trinity, will be in the earth. You see, the devil is an imitator. God is the trinity. 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit, these three are one. The devil is an imitator. It's a satanic trinity coming. That's going to be the devil, the false prophet, and the Antichrist working together in the earth. And that day is coming. It's in the future. When, I don't know, but I tell you this much. If I was you, I wouldn't want to be here at that time. And the only way you're going to escape that time, because you see, we have not been appointed unto wrath, but to obtain mercy. Amen. Amen. But there's going to come a seven-year period of time where there's going to be such chaos and murder and different things happening in the earth. Fear is going to be all over everybody. That's not, that doesn't know God. Amen. So you don't want to be here at that time. The rapture of the church, the seven years of tribulation. And we know this much too. Then we can begin to count down things. Because we know, according to Scripture, that after the seven years of tribulation, the Lord will return with the church. He's coming back not only with the church, but he's coming back with his angels. He's coming back and we know where he's going to land on earth. 
on the Mount of Olives, the Bible says, his foot will set down. So the Lord is coming back to the earth. And I want to deal with something else as we get a little further in this series, the coming of the Father which a lot of people have never looked at before. But the second coming of Jesus Christ, when he comes back to the earth, because in the rapture there's two different components here. And I want to explain this before my time is gone today. There's the rapture and the revelation. And many people mix up the two or get them confused. The rapture is a secret event. The world doesn't see Jesus when he comes to rapture the church. He enters, he steps out of eternity into time and raptures the church up to be with him. The world doesn't see him. He comes as a thief in the night. A thief, when he comes to steal, he doesn't knock on your door and say, hey, I'm here to steal stuff. I just want to let you know. He comes at a time that you're disadvantaged, at a time when you're not looking for him, at a time when he figures he can get in and get out without you detecting him. He said, I'm coming as a thief in the night. Christ is coming, and the world won't see him. They'll just see the disappearance of those that have been serving God, that are ready to go in the rapture of the church. But then at the end of the seven-year period is what we call the revelation of Jesus Christ. When he comes this time, every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him, as he descends from heaven to the earth, because in the rapture he doesn't come onto the earth. In the revelation, he comes right to the earth, the Mount of Olives. And guess what? If you're saved, if you're filled with his spirit, if you're on his side, if you're born again, you're going to be with him. He's coming with the body of Christ. He's coming with the angels, and he's coming to set up his kingdom and reign a thousand years. The thousand-year millennial reign of Christ will begin then. Amen. Be ready. Because Christ is coming, looks like, soon. He told us about the signs and he said, when you begin to see these things, begin to come to pass. To look up and lift up your head for your redemption. What's, what's our redemption? The return of Christ. Drawing near. So don't get confused with the rapture and the revelation of Christ. One is at the beginning of the seven years. Before that, the other is after the seven years have ended. That's when Christ will appear in all the world. They will see him. I want to say this before we get ready to close. There's coming a day when men on earth will not live by faith. They will know there's a God. They will know angels exist. They will see the body of Christ transformed and like Jesus. And what do you think is going to happen? I want you to stay around to find out. So come back to the messenger. We've got a lot of information for you on what's coming. We've got a lot of information to tell you out of the word of God, what God's plan is, what he has said is going to come to pass. The word of God is sure. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of the word of God will go unfulfilled, which are like punctuation marks. So come back to the messenger and hear what the word of God says to you. Right now, I want to offer the hand of God to you, the forgiveness and the grace of God. This is the dispensation of grace, unmerited love and favor. We're getting love and favor from God that we cannot earn. We didn't merit it. There's nothing we could do to obtain it. It's freely given to us. But a day is coming when many are going to beg for mercy but there'll be none for them. Get right with God. Stay right with God. Your future, eternal future, depends on it. What would it profit? This is a statement from the one that created everything. 
And he looks at the values and he says, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world? It became his possession, everything he wants, but loses his soul. And what can a man give in exchange for a soul? In other words, the creator of the world and the soul said that the value of the soul is much more valuable even than the world. So don't let things keep you from Christ. Don't let possessions keep you from Christ. Come to Jesus, for he's looking for you. He's waiting for you. This is the time. This is the moment. This is the age where God is reaching out through his servants, where the Spirit of God is speaking through people to you, where he has bid us to go and tell them to come. Tell them to come to me now. Tell them to get in before it's too late. Tell them that I love them. Tell them that I have mercy on them. Tell them I have a beautiful plan and future for them if they would only come. Tell them I'll forgive them. I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad it is. I will forgive them. Go tell them that. That's what I'm telling you. No matter how bad your sin. It's not stronger than the blood of Christ and the forgiveness of God. Come. Don't wait until you work everything out. Come as you are. Come with a repentant heart, and God will receive you in Jesus Christ, and you will be blessed. Come back to the messenger and hear the rest of these messages that are going to stir your soul. That's going to start you to thinking. That's going to set your priorities straight, I hope, in Jesus' name. We love you here at The Messenger. I'm your host, Pastor Banks. Come back, and let's get deep into the word of God together. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time here on The Messenger.